All right, welcome to a new mini tutorial series that I am starting. This series will follow tutorials more in depth than I can give in my uh, Tech It 2 playthrough. And I will try to explain things more thoroughly, but also quickly so you don't take all day just to find out some silly piece of information you are looking for. So, to start off, we are going to be making a quick tutorial on how the um, Project RED transportation chips and pipes work together, as that is by far the most common question I get asked. So, first, we are going to do the broadcaster chips and the stockkeeper chips, as well as the item transport pipes and the interface pipes. And then by the end, hopefully we have covered all five of these chips and all five of these pipes. There are more um, pipes and chips, but these are the basic ones that I want to cover. So in this chest here, just a normal chest, an alchemical chest in this case, I'm going to put two stacks of iron. And what I want to do is have this iron from this chest be placed in this furnace and then this furnace to put it back into this chest as refined iron, which is what you get in this mod pack once you smelt iron. So to do that, you will need an interface pipe connected to the chest. And these interface pipes are what you will need on every single block or machine that you want to connect with. A item transport pipe cannot connect on its own to this chest, so you need an interface pipe. Then we can place the transport pipe in the middle or in any distance between two machines. That is what they are for. And then we can place the last interface pipe to connect to the electric furnace. So once you have the two machines or chests connected to each other, obviously they will not do anything on their own you have to give them chips, and chips are what supply the knowledge and how-to for all the pipes in the game, and without the chips, nothing will actually happen. So, if you right-click on the interface pipes, you'll have spots for four chips, and first, to just show you how some chips work, I'm going to do the broadcaster chip and the stock keeper chip. So what the broadcaster chip does is whatever this pipe is connected to, it broadcasts the um, inventory contents of that item, in this case a chest. So if I fill this with our, um, iron ingots and then I put a broadcaster chip in this pipe, it'll broadcast these iron ingots to the rest of the network. So this broadcaster chip, before I can use it, I have to right click on the ground with it and it'll bring up this little UI. At the top, it has a filter option, pretty basic. You can set items in this grid to be blacklisted or whitelisted. Whitelisted means only items in this grid are allowed to be used. Blacklisted means only items in this grid are not allowed to be used. So if you leave it on blacklisted, all items in the game will be allowed to be used unless they're in this grid. So that's what we want. Um, the other options, priority, the higher the priority, obviously the higher priority that chip will have. And the orientation, um, this shows the four sides, north, east, south, west, and then the top is up and the bottom is down. And that's just referring, if you see on the mini map in the top right, this is the east side I'm standing on, this is the south side, this is the um, top or the up in this case and so on. So if you have to pull from a specific side you can simulate pulling from that side in this chip. So for our case since it's a chest you can pull from anywhere we'll leave it default, we'll leave the filter blacklist and we'll put it in. And if you hold shift while it's in there it'll tell you everything about it. And then over here all we have to do is request the iron that is already in this chest. So we use an item stock keeper chip. We right click on that. 
fill mode. There's three fill modes, infinite, when item's missing, and when item's empty. We're just going to leave it on infinite. Match options, not really important right now, so we'll leave that blank. And if we just request 40 iron ingots, we can say refill infinitely. Put it in here. It should just take automatically out of here and put into here. There you go. Since I put infinitely, it doesn't matter how many, it doesn't matter that it's 40, it's infinite, so as much iron as it can get, it'll place in here. And once this runs one down, the other chest will send one more. So that's great, we have our iron going from one chest into the furnace and being smelted. But how do we get it back into the chest? Well, we can simply just use another broadcaster chip with the same settings. Blacklist, preference, um, default dis extraction orientation. The extraction orientation is actually important for a machine. If you have this pipe on the top, like this, you must extract from either north, east, south, or west, because you cannot extract from the top of a machine for the final product. However, in our case, since we're attached to the side, we can leave it on default orientation. We can put that in there. So now, we have the contents of this chest broadcasted. So, the entire network sees this 30 iron. And, we now have this furnace broadcasted, so the entire network sees this 13 refined iron ingots. So, quite simply, all we gotta do now is request some refined iron ingots. We can leave it on infinite and it'll request all of them. Match, once again, does not matter. And we can put it in here. So you will see it'll get pulled from the furnace and boom there is all of our refined iron ingots in the system. Now if you keep watching you'll see a major problem that almost everyone runs into and that's that these keep disappearing and reappearing. And if you're looking you just watch you kinda saw just for a second there they got pulled out and then pulled back in So they will do that over and over because this chip is broadcasting the iron ingots or the refined iron ingots and this one's requesting them. So the chest just does what you tell it to and it requests these iron ingots. They come about this far. It's easier to see if I turn this off. Yep, just come out and go back in because that's basically what I'm telling it to do. So to fix that, we take our broadcaster chip, we go to our filter, and we can blacklist, oh, sorry, put that to false, and we can blacklist the refined iron ingots, and now this chip will not work on refined iron ingots, and the network does not see refined iron ingots from this chest anymore. So I'll give this a new battery. Just so you guys can see, it'll send refined iron ingots still. Yep, there it goes. And they will not be pulled out anymore. So now it will work. And this will take any iron you put in this chest, and it'll send it into this furnace, and it will send it back as refined iron ingots. Alright, next up is going to be the extractor chip and the responder chip. And what the extractor chip does is anything it's connected to that it's allowed to, it will always try and pull it out of whatever it can and put it somewhere else. So if you want to empty a chest real quick or you want a machine to always just be immediately emptied, you'll want an extractor chip. And the responder chip simply is um, the same thing except opposite. So it'll request from everywhere it can and just request everything in the system that it's allowed to. So if you right click on it, it'll show you the filter, 
By default, on extractor chips, they are blacklisted, or whitelisted, sorry. So you will have to switch it to blacklist if you want it to allow everything. And then orientation does not matter. For the requester or responder chip, you'll see it's also whitelisted, so you'll have to switch it to blacklist. And then it has a priority option. We'll just leave it at zero. So if you put the extractor chip in here, the responder chip in here, pretty straightforward. It'll just start sending from one to the other. You can see it did a ton of it all at the same time. That's basically all it does. And what the junction pipe is for is if you have two places for this responder chip to go and you fill this one back with iron you'll see it kind of goes all over the place because it uh, doesn't really know what it's doing and that's because if you have any pipe connected to more than two things so in this case it's connected to three it has to be a junction pipe in order to get the most efficient optimal route otherwise it doesn't know where it's going so now if I put the iron back in you'll see it goes straight across and that's all the junction pipe is for. I can quickly show you guys the difference in preference. So let's say this one's a preference of five or six. Throw that in there. Now when I put the iron in here, it says, oh, there's a higher preference chip, even though they have the same settings otherwise. So it'll always go in the highest preference it can. All right, so the last two pipes I have to show you in this episode are the routed request pipe and the routed firewall pipe. The request pipe is pretty simple, it's this guy here. I'll uh, break it and place it again just to prove it to you. This is what a request pipe looks like. Um, it can be attached to a chest or it can be used on its own. If you right click on it, it'll show you a UI of everything in the system. So I have nothing in the system because I didn't put a broadcast chip in my uh, system. Let me take this extractor chip out, put a bunch of dirt and iron in here. So with dirt and iron in this chest, and with a broadcaster chip in this pipe, if I go on this requester chip, or requester pipe, it shows everything in the system that I can request. So, all I have to do is say, hey, give me 64 iron, submit, and it will give me 64 iron. I'll see if I can do that a little quicker. There you go, you can see it come out of the chest and come out of this pipe. And that is all a uh, request pipe does. So it's pretty cool if you have a big storage system or um, just a lot of stuff connected and you want one specific item. So the last pipe I wanted to show is this routed firewall pipe. So I'll place a new one just so you can see it. And what this does is basically exactly what you think it would do. You place anything in here and it will be either blacklisted or whitelisted. So if I put items are blacklisted and put dirt here, and then I put a interface pipe, a chest, and on this interface pipe, let's say I just put another, um, an extractor chip. Uh, let me get rid of that. So now we have a chest with nothing in it with an extractor chip. And this chest has a responder chip, sorry. So this chip should send everything it has to this chip. That's how that should work. Let's put some dirt in here. And you will see it will not go anywhere because this firewall pipe has blacklisted dirt. So dirt cannot go through this pipe. And then if I switch this to whitelisted, there we go, we see our dirt. And that is how the firewall pipe works. So the last chip I have to show is this overflow responder chip. So we have an extractor chip in this chest. And we have a responder chip 
or actually we can use a overflow responder chip just right away. And what the overflow responder chip does is anything in the system that doesn't have a place to go but needs a place to go, it will go here. So it can act as a responder chip if you don't have one in your system. So we put anything in here and this extractor chip will send it straight to this uh, overflow chip because of course the extractor chip wants to send anything it can at all the time anywhere. So it sends it to this overflow chip. I'll just put it back in here and you can see all I've got here is an interface pipe, a junction pipe, and another interface pipe, and it'll send it straight into here. However, if there is a responder chip in your network, like there should be if you have a extractor chip, then the dirt will go exactly where it should, straight over into this responder chip. Now in the case that this responder chip is full, the chest that the responder chip is attached to is full, like so. Um, let's just leave that one spot open for uh, purposes. We'll put, um, we'll take this chip out just for a second. We'll put a bunch of dirt in here. So now in this system, this extractor chip is sending everything it has to this responder chip and in this case this responder chip has a full chest so it can't accept anymore. So obviously if I place the overflow responder chip in here now it will just uh, pull the rest out of this chest. But the other thing and the main use for this overflow responder chip is for overflow. And how you get overflow is let's say you have a spot in a chest open, but then you close it. This dirt will not go back into this chest automatically. Now the dirt is kind of just lost. You can see it's kind of outlined in red and it has nowhere to go. I'll put another one in. So I pick up the dirt, put the dirt back down, and now I've got two stacks of dirt just in the network and if you get too many of these you will cause a ton of lag. So that is why this responder chip is super important and it will pull these lost items out of the system and put them in a chest for you. So that is the five basic chips and the five basic pipes. There are obviously a couple more chips um, there's a dynamic item responder chip, the terminator chip, as well as the crafting chip and the extension crafting chip. And there are a couple more pipes. Um, there is the network valve pipe and the network latency pipe. But those are a little more complex, um, so I won't cover those right now. But these five chips and five pipes can build pretty much anything you want to build. Um, with these chips and pipes, I made an entire HV solar array factory. And uh, I didn't use anything other than these five chips. And I didn't even, I didn't need a request pipe either. I just used the four other pipes. And you can make pretty much any factory you want. So hopefully that uh, clears some things up with the chips and hopes you or helps you use the chips and pipes to your advantage. As I said before, I just wanted to give a quick explanation of how they work and uh, hopefully show how some of them work. And then you guys can go ahead and build whatever you want on your own. If you have any questions, let me know. And I can make a second part if it is needed for a more complex tutorial. But for now, thanks for watching and uh, I hope it helped you in some way.